These gates are the entrance way to some people's living hell. <laughs> I'm in danger. And a new member is about to be joining and crossing behind those gates to their new home. Within Gotham City is the Arkham Asylum. And this is the Arkham Asylum Prison transport truck. Extremely heavily armed guards stand at attention, ready to take on their latest prisoner, and perhaps the most dangerous prisoner they have ever seen in their lives. The bay door is opened and they wheel out a particular green haired man. I'm the Joker, baby. The Joker, who has been carefully strapped to a transportable prison bed, preventing him from moving. The guards take him through the gates to his brand new home in the Gotham Arkham Asylum. The Joker is checked in at the front security desk. The armed guards stand at attention the whole time. They've been instructed that this particular prisoner is constantly up to his old tricks. And so, they have Dr. Harley Quinn preparing a sedative for the Joker to take to calm him down in his new cell and hopefully to prevent him from escaping. But when it comes time to give the Joker the sedative, Harley finds herself absolutely smitten with the man, falling madly in love in an instant. The doors close and the Joker is left inside with all of his wits about him, unsedated like was requested. That would be extremely problematic because Joker's goon here named Gary has been digging this tunnel inside of a mine shaft into Arkham Asylum for the past 10 years. The Joker really, he, he plans ahead. He, he knows what he's doing and uh, he got Gary here to do all of that, only supplying him with some whey protein once a month. So, uh, Gary's ripped, bro. And just like that, the Joker's cell was empty yet again. The guards only discovering this minutes after the Joker ducked into the tunnel under his floorboards, re-emerging through the mineshaft on the other side with his boy, Gary here. The Joker has made his escape after his latest arrest. And with the new movie, The Joker 2, coming out, I felt like it would be really, really fun to customize the Lego Joker and perform a little bit of a rubbery. Oh, hell no! Now, apparently the new Joker movie sucked, so I'm probably not gonna go see it. I really like the first one though, but maybe this video will be better than Joker 2. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and wait till the end of the video for a giveaway. Now let's get into it, baby. The Joker and his goon roll up through the desert real quick. They've gone to such a secluded spot so that the Joker can go ahead and change his outfits without getting spotted. And he's got quite the wardrobe. There's the classic Joker, the high fashion Joker, the cartoon Joker, the uh, Batman Joker, who seems to be wearing the same Joker tattoos on him as Jared Leto's Joker, which immediately makes him cringe. Get out of here. And the Heath Ledger Joker, my personal goat of all the Jokers. And he robbed a bank at the start of The Dark Knight, so that seems pretty fitting to go ahead and use him for our bank robbery. I also had Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker, but out of disappointment, he shall not be shown. Now, right now, the Joker really only has his one goon right here. So he's gonna need some more goons to go with him. And that's why I have our Joker creation kit. Firstly, it comes with a nice gilded table here for Joker to judge people and have clown posse auditions, if you will. And then it comes with clown masks, much like the clowns from the beginning of The Dark Night. And would you look at this? Our very first contestant has arrived. And really, Joker is going to pretty much accept anyone who shows up to the auditions because uh, he's got a bit of a rap sheet and a lot of his goons end up dying, so he's got to take what he can get. So let's meet the Jokers. A few minutes later. And there we have it. After some auditioning, the Joker has his clown posse. And yes, if you're wondering, they're pretty insane. These clown heads are courtesy of BrickTactical.com. I really recommend them. They're fire. And of course, the beauty of the Joker, baby, is that he attracts all walks of life to his cause. From firemen, janitors, doctors, sheriffs, race car drivers, Joe, cowboys, German Wehrmacht, North Africa Corps soldiers, Jesse, and fire lookout rangers. And the Joker, of course, is a very kind boss, so he's gonna equip them with some weapons, 
but uh, they're gonna be pretty goofy. He is the Joker, baby. So he's gotta have a little bit of comedy in his life. We've got comically large revolver barrels, gold-plated AK weapons, the classic brass knuckles, rusted out silenced SMGs, million dollar CSGO knives, and for the Joker and his second hand man Greg, we've got a butterfly knife and an AK-47 with a comically large magazine. Now the Joker gives a rousing speech with only a few veiled threats in there, and the gang takes off, ready to rob Gotham City Bank. Whoa, 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 very nice. What's up gamers, I'm here to tell you about Instant Gaming. Instant Gaming is an amazing place where you can get some fire deals on all sorts of video games. Uh, seriously, it's like 60 to 95% off, as you can see here. Uh, these are all of the Star Wars titles they have. They literally have every Star Wars title. Uh, you can also get XCOM here, Meta of War Assault Squad 2, all of the games I play on the channel you can buy here for extremely cheap prices. If you use my affiliate link in the description, it helps me out a ton. So thank you guys for listening to this sponsorship and thank you to Instant Gaming for continuing to sponsor the channel. Now, a few of the Joker's goons were driving to the bank in an ice cream truck. They were promptly pulled over by a police car. Well, because the police car was a little bit weirded out by the clown driving the ice cream truck. I can't really blame him. And once Gotham police saw that they were carrying weapons while wearing creepy clown masks, oh, it was so Jover. Five of the Joker's clowns were lined up and placed under arrest. The rest were still en route to the bank, but this was a pretty big hit to them. Meanwhile, the Joker was busy being interviewed on a talk show by the talk show host, Murray. You want to hear a joke, Murray? You get what you deserve. Oh, hold on, hold on. Nope, nope, nope. We're not doing this. I'm, t I'm too ashamed. Murray, you were incredible in the, in the first Joker movie, but now it's just ruined. It's just ruined. I, I read all the spoilers, and that movie sounds god-awful. Joker 2 is awful. You know what really grinds my gears? You, America. This is the one movie I feel confident in saying that without watching it. So let's get back to The Dark Knight, a goaded movie. The Joker now arrives to Gotham City Bank, and it's pretty clear that the one security guard just happens to recognize him. Joker brandishes his butterfly knife, and let's just say gives the man a brand new smile. The Joker and his team swing open the doors to the bank and are now ready to get to work. They're about to make the largest withdrawal in Gotham Bank history. But a certain winged man is onto him. The Batman has heard about the heist. Commissioner Gordon had radioed in to the Batman. He found out about the heist because the Joker's henchmen had quickly spilled the beans to the cop that arrested them. That's the problem. Joker's goons got loose lips and loose lips Sink ships. So the Batman was ready in the Batcave. Well, not really. He had a lot of outfits he needed to try on first to decide what to wear to the bank heist. Of course, you got classic Batman, 1960s Batman, jetpack Batman, pajamas Batman, Santa Claus Batman, the Dark Knight Batman, Batfleck, Batman if the robber killed him instead of his parents, gilded Batman, and honestly, many other bat looks. This man has an extensive wardrobe. I don't know who his tailor is, or how he's keeping them from telling that he's Batman. Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, unless it's Alfred the butler, but then it's like, how much time does Alfred have in a day, man? Tailoring an entire bat suit for combat, man? I mean, I guess Morgan Freeman's character in The Dark Knight does it, but is that canonical to every single Batman? Brother, we just might never know. Or you probably do know, and I'm just an idiot. Regardless, Batman goes for an old, reliable look, with the tidy whitey showing outside of his suit right there. Now quit looking at his grundle, and let's go fight some crime. Now the Joker has made quick work, taking the bank manager hostage and threatening him for the code to the bank vault. Luckily, Greg is also a master hacker, so he's working on the electronics inside of the vault to unseal it. If they manage to do so, there are fatty stacks of cash inside waiting for them as a reward. On top of the roof, additional of Joker's clowns have taken more bank patrons hostage and are keeping them at gunpoint. They're doing this 
police to prevent the police from going in and stopping the Joker. A hostage situation, if you will. Luckily, the Batman is not far from the scene. He swoops in and kicks one of the men off the building. Lucky for this man, Batman never kills. So he'll be fine the next day after taking a three-story drop onto concrete below face first. It's a trap. The caped crusader never fails. But the other clown points her horribly long revolver straight at Batman. To be honest, uh, he's usually used to fighting these things during the night, it's, it's daytime. So so she can just see him, and he's all the way over here. He really didn't think this one through, but lucky for the Batman, someone else is here. The Boy Wonder. After a brief struggle with the gun, the Batman sneaks up behind and stabs her in the back of the head with a batarang. Once again, luckily, uh, no one dies from Batman, so she'll be fine with that lobotomy. Robin stays behind to look after the now freed hostages. Good boy. While Batman makes his way curbside, where two more clowns are guarding the front entrance. One clown immediately runs away at the sight of Batman. I mean, after all, uh, you know, he's kind of a legend. And while he may think he's not actually killing people, uh, these clowns never ever appear again. That's suspicious. So he's not sure what happens to him, so he'd rather just run. While the other clown is suddenly disarmed in an instant. As quick as a bullet, Batman has thrown his batarang, disarming the clown. He then sends the full weight of a 250 pound muscular man into the clown. Yeah, he's out cold, but not dead. The Batman never kills. It's simply against his morals. But little does he know, the Joker is making a hasty getaway with a sack filled to the brim with doubloons. Next door to the bank is a laundry hut, and it just so happens to connect with a secret tunnel into the bank vault on the other side. The Joker crawled through a machine and is now escaping with the money. The loyal clown, Greg, stands back, ready to fight for his master, giving him the chance to escape. But Batman takes a gun and shoots him. Greg goes down, but not to worry. Batman doesn't kill. He simply wounds his victims. Or, or so he seems to think. I don't, I don't know, bro. D does he just think like throwing people off of buildings and you know, beating the absolute crap out of them doesn't kill people? SMH. The Joker quickly runs down an alleyway as fast as he possibly can. But the Batman is zeroed in on him at this point. There is no escape. He quickly trips him up with his gilded batarang. Ugh. Yeah, that, that looked good. But when Bats went to go and look at who the Joker really was behind the paint, he realized he'd been bamboozled. Harley Quinn had dressed up as the Joker and taken his place after the bank robbery, allowing the real Joker time to get away with the money. But he was honestly a little bit disappointed. He didn't really want the money, he just wanted to mess with Batman, and, and now that was over because he got away and won, so it, it just kind of sucked. So he returns to the bank with a Molotov cocktail and blows it on up. At this point, Batman shows up back to the bank, which is, um, yeah, burning on fire, destroyed. It's not looking too good, uh, and he just kind of looks disappointedly at Joker. I mean, this was, uh, this was just kind of pointless, it seemed. But at the very least, the Joker was back in police custody. And this time, he would be locked away in a far more secure, secluded, and dark dungeon cell at the very top of the Arkham Asylum. Thanks for watching this video, boys. I was gonna base it off of the plot of the Joker 2 uh, until apparently the movie just absolutely sucks. So I am so unbelievably disappointed. But you won't be disappointed because we got a giveaway for today's video. I'm going to be giving away a classic Batman minifigure as well. <laughs> Hold on, stand up there, fellas. As a classic Riddler minifigure to you guys. All you gotta do is hit the like button, subscribe with notifications turned on, and comment down below what you your favorite Batman movie of all time is. Either way, guys, I'm gonna be very Florida Man-esque for the next few days. Oh, God. I live in Orlando, and Hurricane Milton at the time of recording this video is about to hit us pretty hard, so I might be out of power. I think we're very safe where we are, luckily. It's only gonna be like a Cat 2 or a Cat 1 when it hits us, but still, if you guys are in Florida, stay safe, boys, and there might not be videos for a few days. Definitely not on the Daily Bricks channel. I'm gonna delay that, because I think I might lose power for a few days. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.